Hey there, Power Bird Maker here uh, for another episode of card making with you guys. Today I'm going to show you how I make this card where it's just a simple hand drawn element, uh, central motif that I'm going to draw for you and then later on color for you with a simple uh, coloring um, tools like the Pro Maker pen. So this card, I have a card stuck here that is 14 by 14 centimeters, which I've cut. It's 220 GSM. I have pre-drawn the template, uh, which is this eight crisscrossing lines, which looks like a compass. Um, and it just makes it easy to do the, the drawing. Um, I'd like to keep it as symmetrical as possible, but I don't think I can. Um, but really, it's just about having fun with the shapes that you're going to put along these um, quadrants if you will um, and I'm just layering up uh, from uh, from the center outwards like a mandala um, so I just make these shapes um, spontaneously there is no specific plan with these guys you just basically play with it and it's just like a play uh, with shapes uh, but obviously the intention here is to make like a floral uh, shape and then this then allows me to have uh, a motif to color later on
So here guys, I am then going to proceed to tracing the drawing. Um, there is method in this madness, um, as you can see um, in a bit. I've got this tracing paper here, um, which I will divide into an A5. It's an A4 sheet divided uh, by two. And I'm just uh, kneading the A5 half of the paper here which I will overlay onto the painted or the colored uh, drawing because we want to create a mask. Making masks is very uh, important at times when you want to protect areas of the drawing that uh, you don't want to involve in a particular process yet. So I'm just putting some marks here just to make sure that the top bit of the drawing uh, coincides with the top bit of the mask. So that once we've cut out the outline that we are using for this particular masking technique, it will all coincide. So this is just uh, the preliminary uh, tracing of the actual drawing. So tracing papers are really useful uh, for card making because there is a lot of masking that you do for traditional uh, making of these motifs when you, especially when you treat the card with um, mixed media like paints and watercolors and all sorts of other things like embossing and for this particular one we, we will do embossing in due course so I've traced the um, drawing now, so I'm just trying to remove this uh, drawing out of the uh, tracing paper and I will uh, cut this outline so that we can have our little um, negative shape of the uh, flower and we will have a mask. So it sounds faffy and a lot of work and things but the thing about this is that once the mask is made like this on the tracing paper you can certainly then reuse this mask and what I tend to do is I then use the um, outside outline that I'm cutting at the moment with a scalpel or a knife I will retrace this onto a new cardstock and I will work my drawing inwards so I'll start working from the outside because that now establishes um, an outside perimeter of the drawing and I'll work my way inwards so that way you can recreate the exact shape of the um, motif that um, you made and this just works when the intention is to not mass produce cards you know in a quick succession um, this certainly, for me anyway, it's my personal view, lends the card a really, really uh, personal and a handmade touch. You can, you can really tell when a card is mass produced or a card has been handmade specifically for uh, a tailored purpose, you know, so it, 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 just, it just is obvious to the person, or to the beholder or the recipient of the card so lots of processes in well for this one I think there's not a lot of processes but you know there's some processes or steps to create the card and it just makes the card special I think for me um, so once this mask is uh, finished uh, you will then need to overlay this onto the drawing so that you can start your embossing guys and so what will follow is the embossing
So we've done the embossing. We've come to the well, my favorite part of the process, I think, is that I do like the inking stage. So this is now the inking. I'm using Distress Oxide inks, as you can see. Um, and I'm just using two colors for this one because I just wanted to keep it simple. I'm using Twisted Citron inside and Lucky Clover, which is a, a sort of slightly darker green outside and by creating a, a sort of uh, blended effect um, radiating out from the flower basically you just create this sort of halo like feel uh, just adds another dimension I'm just showing there the water that I'm going to mist over this once I've inked so the twisted citron which is this sort of yellowy green uh, color is in the inside of the flower um, and there is no um, specific thing uh, to do here you simply just need to apply the ink uh, I do apologize again for this uh, shaky table that I'm using I am mid movement of um, equipment and things in a location so I'm really just uh, using this particular table for this particular project. Um, the green um, Lucky Clover uh, is on the outside because it's darker and I just wanted the inside to be uh, a lot lighter. So as you can see because we have um, done um, masking and we then embossed only the specific part of the flower we can ink to our heart's content and the image of the flower is protected so I'm just rubbing that now with kitchen towel to remove the excess ink around the flower um, this is the beauty of um, inking really because if you've embossed it like this uh, it just is quick um, and it's easy to make a background around the motif so this is a trusted technique guys so I will now mix this with uh, water as you can see and then we wait uh, for it to do its magic uh, distress oxide inks uh, for those of you who are new to this is that they do granulate uh, they create this little cloudy whitish areas uh, where they would create granulation so it just creates an effect on uh, the inking especially if you're combining uh, two colors or more so I just dry it once I am happy with the effect and um, you dab with the tissue uh, just helps uh, control where things are in terms of the effect but really this is very very free and fluid and um, there is no um, right or wrong with this one I think you just well it's it's playing with the the inks and just uh, it's like a mini adventure of uh, graphic possibilities so drying is important uh, so that you seal the, the effect and you stop it uh, on its tracks basically um, so I'm just using this normal portable uh, dryer that you use for embossing uh, that's all you need really you don't need any more than that but a hair dryer would also be a good alternative for this so when it dries I just like to bend uh, the paper a bit so that it, it sort of flattens uh, again and then you can put it in your cardstock pen and I'm just making note of the upper bit so that I can reorient this onto my cardstock
So I'm now gluing this onto the card base and we are nearing home run. The card is nearly finished. I do take care uh, when gluing the main element of the card onto the card base because it's really important that we uh, pay attention to this tiny detail. So here I'm I'm using this bathroom shelf that I've got, a trusty old one that I've got for years and it's just really useful to weigh the car down while I wait for it to dry and it does magic when it comes to drying the car because it dries flat and the car looks really professionally made and it's not bendy. So here we are guys, the card finished for you, very simple but very very effective hand drawn hand colored flower mandala card. Thank you for coming and stopping by today and see you again next time.